right, guys. So today we're going to talk about the writing guidelines and what's expected of you for writing at Solanco High School. And this isn't just for English class. This is really for all your classes. Um, this is a good guide for writing major essays or compositions. So um, right at the top of this paper, your guided notes that you're going to be following along with, VIP, very important paper. This is a very important paper, and you're going to be referring back to it many times throughout this course. So this is one that you should definitely hold on to. Um, you have some basic things to start. Your name, date, class, and period are going to appear on the left side. They are going to uh, be double-spaced, and they will only appear on the first page. So don't put them in as a header footer. Just put them right on the page. And then the title of your composition is going to be centered. It's going to have standard capitalization, and it's not going to look any different than any of the other text. It will not be bolded. It will not be underlined in quotation marks. It's not going to be anything fancy. A lot of kids like to make the title fancy, um, and it's not appropriate in a formal essay. Well, you actually really want the paper to look uniform and standard. As boring as that may sound, uh, that's what we're looking for. So just so you know, if I ever use the term composition, what I'm referring to is any type of of writing assignment. It doesn't matter the length, it can be something shorter, but when I say essay, that's the key word that says this is a multi-paragraph composition, this will have an introduction and a conclusion. So to start, all your body paragraphs are going to have what's called a topic sentence. You kind of do this naturally already, but uh, we just call it a topic sentence, and that's where you basically say what you're going to be talking about. It gives kind of that simplest answer to the big question that you're looking at in your paper. Uh, there shouldn't be any unidentified pronouns in your topic sentence. Um, so if I were to ask, uh, why is the location of Dr. King's speech significant? If you were to say, he gave the speech when he was protesting there, uh, your lack of specificity is really going to hurt your reader because truly, that could be a number of people. So if you were to say, Dr. King gave his I have a dream speech when he was protesting in Washington, D.C., you've really raised the level of specificity, and that is ideal for especially for a topic sentence. So once you kind of get into talking about your subject, it's okay to then use those unidentified pronouns as long as you're making sure that they're relevant to who you're talking about. And then every body paragraph is going to end with a focus sentence, and that's basically your wrap-up sentence. Uh, this is also something very natural. You don't want to just kind of stop. But what a lot of kids do that we do not want to see is something called a forward-reaching transition. And this is where you're taught and, and you were taught before, okay, well, now you're going to tell your reader what you're going to talk about next. Here's the thing. This is mature writing. We don't need that. I, as your teacher and your audience, I don't need you to hold my hand and say, okay, Mrs. McRobbie, here's what we're going to do now. That's great, and I love, love, love that you want to help me through this, but I've got it, I promise. So go ahead and just wrap it up for me so I know that parameter is done, and then go ahead and give the next parameter its own topic sentence. Keep them all separate. It's kind of like if you're one of those people that when you're eating your dinner, even though all your food ends up in the same place, you want all your food to not touch. Keep them separate as if you want to keep them all away from each other. Um, if you're looking at a one-paragraph composition, that focus sentence will just wrap up that idea. But in a multi-paragraph one, it'll probably show a connection to your uh, thesis statement and the overall big picture of your paper. You're going to want to support your ideas with examples. It's not enough to say to me, that poem had symbolism. Well, first of all, what's the symbolism? Show me. Tell me. I want to see quotes. I want you to look at that symbolism and explicate it and tell me what you think it means and how is it relevant to the piece. It's, it's not something you can just say exists. It's got to be proven. Um, and the more you can prove something, the better your paper is going to be. So um, you can use direct quotes. You can use um, examples from lessons, anecdotal evidence, explanations, dates, statistics. really depends on your content. But there's a lot of different ways you can support your paper. But if you just say something exists and you moved on, you haven't really done your job. Uh, you should use topic-specific vocabulary and use a mature understanding of your course material. This is a good thing to do in the revision steps, is to go back and say, okay, is my uh, vocabulary mature? Did I do a good job here of showing that I know what I'm talking about? And that's where you can kind of up the ante with your vocabulary um, through the use of a thesaurus or just really looking it over and saying, do I really need to say very uh, or really? Is that a necessary word or is that fluff? Um, and kind of pulling out all that important stuff. You should not use any type of electronic lingo that you might use if you're texting someone. Um, while it's fine when you're trying to get across a message quickly, it's not appropriate in an essay, and it does not do much for your point if you um, kind of come off 
using immature, you know, you are instead of your, or putting LOL, God forbid, okay? Um, you are going to want to indent five spaces at the beginning, which is usually the same as hitting the tab button. Um, if you don't do that, it's going to be difficult to tell where all the breaks are and where a paragraph starts, especially if you didn't make good use of your topic and focus sentences. And then if you're being scored on organization, you're really going to get hit there. Um, if a composition's typed, it should be 12-point font everywhere, um, and it should be double-spaced, again, everywhere. And it should be done in Times New Roman. That's the standard font. Um, I know some people allow Arial. I'm not a big fan, and um, it's just better to go with Times New Roman. That's the standard. Uh, if you use something like Comic Sans, I can't even take you seriously. That's basically like the font of clowns. So just keep that in mind when you're writing. And don't skip extra lines between paragraphs. So if you're already double spaced, there's no need to hit enter again. Okay? Famous people. Do not refer to them by their first name. You don't know them. Um, unless it's someone who has only a first name and doesn't have a last name. So for instance, if you were writing an essay about Prince, which would be awesome, um, you would say Prince, but you're not going to call Ben Franklin Ben um, or Thomas Payne T. Payne. You're going to call them Payne. You're going to call them Franklin. So um, just beware of keeping that formal. Spelling is important. It's really important. And especially with all the devices we have today, there's really no reason to be misspelling things when you can send it through so many filters and spell checks and Google Docs will catch your stuff and everything. So just make sure you're really going over your paper before you turn it in to find those spelling errors. Um, fun trick, if you read something forward, what happens is your brain knows the order in which words appear, that you're going to have your subject and your verb. It automatically kind of fills in these things. So if you've ever gone, how did I not see that silly mistake? It's because your brain fixed it for you. Uh, if you want to find spelling errors, you can read your sentences backwards. For instance, the sentence here on the board, instead of reading spelling does matter, you would say matter does spelling. Uh, what happens is your brain doesn't really understand that order of those words, so then it truly looks at the word as it is, and you're able to identify mistakes. It's kind of a neat trick. Your brain is an amazing thing. This is what our graphic organizer looks like of the writing. I just wanted to show it to you. It's just a graphic representation. I'm going to go into each piece here, but um, this is what it would look like. So essentially, you're going to start with your thesis. You know a thesis statement, but we kind of break it down into two parts, and that's the thesis stem, which is kind of what you're going to be talking about, your point you're making, your opinion you're defending, your position. Um, and that's going to be kind of the first thing you work on because you can't really move to the parameter stage until you're sure you know what you want to talk about. And then your parameters are going to be supporter, uh, supporters for your thesis stem. Basically, the three things you're going to talk about that prove your thesis stem. And then when you put them together with their powers combined, that becomes your thesis statement. And that should end your intro paragraph. Your topic sentence, again, should be the first sentence in your body paragraph. And your main point, uh, that comes next. So imagine each body paragraph is a burger. And your topic sentence is kind of your top bun. Um, and the main point, that's the burger. And it's really important that the burger be the biggest and juiciest part and that it all come from you. So essentially, we should not see a lot of outside stuff and nothing coming from you. Because then essentially all you've done is introduce outside pieces. This isn't about you introducing outside sources. They support you, not the other way around. So make sure you have your main points really solidified before you start bringing in supporting details. That should really just be the condiments on top of the burger, um, th what makes it kind of better. And, and enhances the taste of the burger, okay? You can do that in the form, again, of direct quotes or anecdotal evidence. And then you're going to wrap it up with your focus sentence um, and how that paragraph kind of connects to the overall point of the essay. You can do a lot with your intro. You can use an attention getter, um, lots of different ways you can do that. Again, it really depends on the assignment. Um, you're going to want to introduce the topic. If you're writing about a book and at no point you mention the book or the author, you're missing out. Your reader has no idea what you're talking about. So you can talk about George and Lenny from Of Mice and Men all you want, but it would have been helpful if you said this is Of Mice and Men because, heaven forbid, your reader didn't read it. They have no idea what you're talking about. So again, that thesis statement is the last sentence in the intro paragraph. Your conclusion paragraph is kind of like, so the intro paragraph is a funnel that funnels down into the more specific and ends with your thesis statement. Your conclusion paragraph is the opposite. It's a funnel that goes out the other way. It starts with a repeated thesis statement, but you're welcome to modify it so it doesn't look so uh, formulaic and repeated. 
and then look at it for the big picture. Like if you're looking at literature, what is the overall point of this thing? How, what are the cultural significance? What does this mean for the author? What does this mean for the movement? What does this all mean? Make connections. How does this tie into today? There's so many different ways you can go, um, and it, it's so much nicer to see paragraphs that do that versus the ones that just basically repeat what was in the intro. And we don't need that as readers. We've already seen it. Um, so try to give us something new here. Um, and you can do uh, a bunch of different concluding tactics that are listed here. You are going to be pre-writing in this class always. Um, and I know that for some people, they just want to get started. And I understand that. But I can tell the difference between an essay that was pre-written and one that wasn't. So you're going to want to make sure that you're kind of paying attention to that. So you're going to start with an organizer and then an outline and kind of just start tailoring what you want to do. And then you're going to get to it. You're going to actually start the writing. Um, you definitely want to do your body paragraphs first. And that sounds silly, but it, think about it like this. If you were to have a friend behind the curtain and you don't know who the friend is, but you have to introduce the friend to someone, how are you supposed to know how to introduce them if you don't know who it is? Find out who it is, get to know your friend, and then you can do your intro and conclusion. And then, of course, you'll put it all in the right order. You will need to edit it. You'll check it for grammar and proofread and have someone else look through it. Because, frankly, we sometimes think that our stuff is great and it's not. Um, so this is why you should definitely be looking over these, okay, and having someone else look over them. So if you have any questions, feel free to drop a line. You can tweet. You can leave a comment on uh, Google Classrooms. You can leave a comment here. Any questions you may have, and really, we will address them as we go um, and as these papers come up. So hold on to this paper. It is a VIP, absolutely super important. So make sure you are saving it and referring back to it many times. And again, see me if you need help. I'm willing to help with your writing process. If you're willing to work with me, we can be a great team. All right, thanks guys.